So people have been trying to get me to do comparison videos for quite some time. I actually did one between two primary arms 3x magnifiers, the base that is absolutely worthless, and the LER version, the Gen 4, which is absolutely fantastic. It's actually one of my favorite magnifiers of all time, or at least that I've reviewed so far. But for 100 bucks, it's a super compelling argument. But the video didn't really do so well, so I guess people don't realize that I've already done this sort of video before. But this one I think is going to do much better because right here we have two competitors from different manufacturers that I feel are some of the best choices in mid-range magnified optics that you can get. For me, a mid-range magnified optic is the minimum magnification under 5x and the maximum magnification under 20x. The PSD Gen 2 to my left is the one that I've reviewed before. It comes with the EBR2C reticle and is a 3 to 15 version. The Optica 6 by Miopta is the 3 to 18 by 50 that I just recently reviewed, featuring the MRED 1 reticle, which was made by Dark Lord of Optics right here on YouTube. Both of these come in at around the same price point, around 800 bucks, give or take. You can find the Viper PSD Gen 2s on, on sale and or used for around six to 700 bucks. And in my review of this PST, I thought it was a fantastic scope for the money. And so do all of you. A lot of people run these on guns that are three four thousand dollars which i don't necessarily agree with but you know what it's a fantastic stepping stone into getting into a fairly good performing piece of glass that tracks well looks good and has a warranty that'll never quit however when i first laid eyes on miopta optica 6 i was completely blown away by its feature set i thought to myself this would be the perfect comparison to something like the pst so when I found this one secondhand, albeit brand new in box, for a pretty good price, just under $700, I said I have to give it a shot and see what it's like. Because I really like this magnification range. For me in the style of shooting that I do both with 22 lr and center fire cartridges, I'm all about the practical style shooting, which is not for groups, just making sure I get hits, and I like being able to see more of my surroundings than just focusing on, in on the target. Plus, I'm the type of person that if I zoom in too much, I start getting lost and confused in all of my movements. I lose focus on my breathing, I lose focus on my heart rate, and I don't necessarily shoot better groups with higher magnification. In fact, a lot of people that I know also suffer from the same exact thing. You increase your magnification, you automatically think you're going to shoot tighter groups, but what ends up happening is you magnify all your finite movements, your heart rate, your breathing, and it ends up actually making you shoot worse groups. So for me, this magnification range between these two is basically perfect for anything that you're gonna be doing from really close, because a 3X minimum allows you to still shoot fairly fast at 50 yards, and 15 and 18X should technically get you to a man-sized target at about 1,500 and 1,800 yards. Now those are very extreme on the high end, but if you base your magnification versus target size the way I do, it's 1x per 100 yards for a practical style shot. The US Navy was doing that a lot back in the 90s, so I sort of got stuck in that mindset and have found that it just really works for me. It makes sense. So with getting my mindset out of the way, how do these two scopes really compare? Well, before we start looking through them and putting them side by side, I figured let's go through some of the feature sets and weigh them in and see what we have. Now, I'm not going to make this too in-depth. You can watch the full reviews linked in the description below to what I feel about both of these individually. Granted, they've had some time apart, so it'd be good to get behind the PST and the Miopta 6 at the same time to really give myself a better fair comparison between these two. But for right now, they both have fast focus eyepieces. Obviously, they have magnification adjustments. They both feature a side focus and illumination, neither of which are locking. The PST does not offer a locking elevation turret, but what it does offer our stadia lines that you can count your revolutions with, which I talked about in that review. However, the Miopta 6 does offer a very nice locking elevation turret. This one also features a capped windage turret, which for me and a drop reticle like this, I quite enjoy. The one thing that the Miopta offers over the PST is this included throw lever, which I feel is one of the best in the business because it's a little threaded plug right here, that can screw into any of these holes. So whether you're shooting righty, lefty, or you have a personal preference to where you want this thing going, it's very easy just to take out, switch it over, and put it in. Whereas with the PSD Gen 2, you have to go the aftermarket route. This is an MK Machining Pro lever, and it is fantastic and works extremely well, but you gotta add another $25, $30 onto the price. 
Another slight difference is that the PSD has a 44 millimeter front objective and the Miopta Optica 6 has a 50 millimeter. However, you can get the Miopta Optica 6 in a 56 millimeter front objective, which I think would be even better than the current 50. Weight wise, they're actually pretty close. The PST comes in at 29.2 ounces, including the throw lever, and the Optica 6 comes in at about 31.2 ounces. So as near as makes no difference, these things are within two ounces of one another, which isn't a whole lot. In fact, I'd have to reckon it probably has a lot to do with the fact that this is a 50 millimeter as opposed to a 44. So with that, let's get behind them and see how they actually look. All right, everybody, grab some popcorn, grab a drink, get something because this is going to be a long video because there's a lot of information to talk about with these two scopes. Now, if you want to find out more about these two individually, go watch the individual reviews that I have linked in the description below. But if you've already watched those, welcome. To start things off, we have the PST Gen 2 on the left and the Miopta Optica 6 on the right. From here on out, they'll always be in that orientation. I'm going to refer to the PST as simply the PST and the Optica 6 as the Optica because it's going to take too long to pronounce otherwise. With the tracking test, you'll see that, well, number one, both the reticles line up to the targets basically perfectly, and number two, they basically track perfectly. The reticles on these two scopes are fairly similar with a little bit of sort of differences and nuances between the two. That all comes down to personal preference. And for me, I love both of these reticles for different reasons. You see the EBR2C reticle found on the PST is also the same one that resides in my Razer HD Gen 2 3 to 18 and perhaps a four and a half to 27 that may or may not be on my desk for review. The MRAD reticle on the Optica 6 is also awesome because for me, with the illumination that it has and that round ring around the center crosshair, it's a little bit faster for me to pick up on target. As a result, for my style of shooting with my 22 LRs up close, it's really easy to get behind it, pick up the center, and take a quick shot. Now, as you've seen, both of the illuminations are on right there. They both look pretty good. They both track basically flawlessly. Now we're going to step it up, and before I talk about anything else, I have to talk about the most important difference between these two optics, and that is the field of view. The field of view on the PST is 8.6 feet at 100 yards, whereas the Optica 6, it's 5.7 feet. That is a tremendously huge difference. Now keep in mind, the PST is only a 44 millimeter objective, whereas the Optica in this case is a 50, but you can retrofit the Optica 6 with a 56 millimeter front objective. However, it only increases the field of view to 5.8 feet. Now, I don't know if that is at its maximum magnification, which you would have 15X in the PST and 18 on the Optica, which would make a huge difference. But nevertheless, the proof is in the pudding. My camera that I'm using to film with this is at zero magnification. So what you see is what you get in this regard. The image on the PST is significantly larger than the Optica, and it wasn't until I put these two side by side and actually use them that I'm like, there's something severely different with these two. However, everything that is filmed on all these segments is at the exact same time of day with the exact same camera settings. And you might notice that the same difference that I do, the optic is brighter, not in just daytime bright like this, but in darker environments as well, which we will get to at the end of the video. With that being said, here at 30 yards, both of these have a phenomenally clear image. You had just seen at 3x the minimum magnification on both of these optics as we went across the power lines right above. There was basically no distortion to them whatsoever. And here, edge-to-edge -edge sharpness is stellar on both of these. With the side focus, we can get the image to look absolutely razor sharp here at 30 yards. With the Optica, I just brought it up to its maximum magnification of 18x, which I will do throughout this video. I will bring it up to an indicated 15 on the magnification ring, and then usually finish it off at its maximum to show you the differences between 15 and 18x. And guess what? It's really not that different. As we push back to 400 yards, I start with the side focus back at 30 yards and indicate them in. Now the PST was more used than the Optica in this case, so it's a lot easier to turn the focus ring as opposed to the Optica, which is still very stiff. Neither scope's illumination is outfitted with a bright enough capacity to be seen in a bright day like today. So don't expect this to be full on daytime bright. It's just not in the cards. And these scopes don't really need it with the reticles that they have, especially the Optica. In truly perfect conditions, both of these scopes look absolutely fantastic. 
As I bring the optic up to its maximum magnification of 18x, it's clear to see that both of these perform at a very high level, despite their price point. These are around six to eight hundred dollars, depending on where you, when, and where you find them, and who's got them available, and reticle choice. Now, as far as which one I think looks better, to my eye, the Optica looks a little bit sharper with a little bit more resolution as opposed to the PST. Objects in the foreground and background of the focus point seem to be in a little bit sharper with a little bit better colors. Now, again, this is during a picture perfect day, but as you'll see in less than stellar conditions, I think it pulls ahead even further. We pan up and look at 800 yard power towers and here they both look again absolutely fantastic. Before we spend too much time on those power towers I adjust the side focus to bring those 30 yard power cables into focus. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration that pops up with the PST as with the Optica it doesn't seem to be hindered with that sort of issue here on a bright sunny day but I will say this the Optica is a little bit faster to get into focus only because the throw is a little bit shorter. It's still not as easy to turn as the PSTs, and if it was, it would be that much faster. But here at 800 yards, you can start to see the PST fall off a little bit as far as sharpness goes. I went as far as adjusting the side focus a little bit more because maybe I thought that it wasn't really there. But as you can see, it just doesn't seem as sharp as the Optica 6 does in this regard. Also pay attention to the trees in the foreground. On the Optica, they are much sharper than they are in the PST. Bringing up the Optica to its maximum magnification of 18x, yes, the field of view might not be as big, but the image does look larger. Is 3x a deal breaker? For many of you, no, not really. For myself, it's hit or miss. Here, I zoom in the camera that I'm recording with to 2x on both of these. And here, you can absolutely see the difference between the PST on the left and the Optica 6 on the right. If you were going for a larger field of view, something that will give you a better sense of what's going on around you, the PST is the winner. However, if you're looking for absolute sharpness and clarity, you go with the Optica 6. Another thing to keep in mind, these are both at their maximum magnifications, which is again, 15X for the PST and 18X for the Optica 6. But see, Right now, I know that you're at zero mils of elevation, and at 1,000 yards for a 308, you need to go up around 8 to 10 mils depending on load, elevation, yada, yada, yada. So how does this look if I actually had it dialed in and needed to take a shot? Well, I'm about to show you. I add 10 mils of elevation to both of these. Keep in mind, where I currently have these zeroed is both at 50 yard zeros for a 22 LR. It's easy for me to do, and it, allow, it ensures that I have plenty of movement on the elevation when I do my tracking test. Here, with 10 mils of added elevation, the PST on the left seems to have gotten blurrier at 6 o'clock, maybe a little bit sharper above the center crosshair, whereas the Optica 6 still looks razor sharp edge to edge. And keep in mind, I still have 3x more on the Optica. As I pull back the magnification to meet an indicated 15x, I think the image only looks better. So here's another big fact for you. Well, it's not the fact that I forgot to do zoom in on one and then the other. I get there eventually. But another thing is the PST has a minimum side focus of 20 yards, whereas the Optica has a minimum side focus of 10 yards. That is a huge difference if you're shooting a 22, a pellet rifle, an airsoft gun, at really close distances, so keep that in mind. 50 yard target and you see both 22 LR holes and 30 caliber holes. There's a touch of chromatic aberration on both of these peeking out around the bullseye. Other than that, the images both look absolutely fantastic and you can see me making shots on both paper with ease. If you're worried about which one would be better for a 22 shoot, honestly it all depends on which one you prefer. Because at this point, you're basically splitting hairs. But you know what? Shooting paper's fun and all. But what happens if you're shooting at a more dynamic target? Well, we just so happen to have these soda cans here at 50 yards, and we're going to see just how much detail we can pick up on them while I shoot at them. Also, keep in mind, the illumination on the Optica 6 is just bright enough to peek through. Earlier, I had the PST on, but you couldn't really see it. I think that has something to do with, well, the emitter probably being better on the Optica, but also the amount of the reticle that they're trying to illuminate. On the Optica, it's only that crosshair. With the PST, it's the entire tree, and that definitely plays a role. 
I definitely rushed this focus job on the optical, which is why it doesn't look as good as it probably could, but there's still plenty of detail in both these images. Another thing was I shot the optica first and I noticed that the table was moving when I was shooting, so when I filmed this again for the PSD, I sort of uh, shot elsewhere to not have that issue. These steel targets have seen better days, especially that small one to the right. With both the PST and the Optica, you can pick up every single time this thing has ever been shot. And do you really need much more than that? I don't really think so. There is a lot of stuff to be focusing on in this image, especially as I take shots with my M1 carbine and I get that big plume of dust in the back. As far as which one looks better, we can nitpick this all day long. The chains look a little bit better on the PST, a little bit of chromatic aberration popping up on both of them, though I think the PST is still a little bit worse than the Optica. But boy, do they both look absolutely sensational. 15x. Eyebox is where things get a little bit funny. I put the illumination on both of these at full, and at 3x, they're both extremely forgiving and easy to get behind. So if you're looking to shoot either of these in a dynamic environment, at least at 3x, you have no concerns with either of them. They're basically identical. 8X. As you just heard, bumping these up to 8x, again, they're both about the same. Though, to my eye, using these in practice, I feel the optic is a little bit easier to get behind. I wonder if that has something to do with the reticle option, but it's, it's just probably 15X. all mental. 15x. 15x, they're both pretty tight. But I think, again, the optic has a little bit more forgiveness to it. Whenever you're just out of the plane of perfect for the PST, it seems to get a little bit dark in the edges and even the center. Whereas the Optica seems a little bit more usable at the center. We're getting there. We're almost done, I promise. Now here at 3x at 100 yards, they both look excellent. But you might be saying to yourself, well, I see more of the 100 yard line through the Optica than as opposed to the PST. But that's because you could see almost all of what you're looking through the Optica with as opposed to the PST where you're probably missing about 20%. That's a huge difference. I bring up both of these to their maximum magnifications and I turn the illumination on both. Now I'm gonna backtrack to what I said earlier. The Optica is a little bit faster to get onto focus. The minimum to maximum focus from 10 to infinity is a shorter throw than with the PST's 20 to infinity. The Optica is also much stiffer to turn, or at least in this example, and it be makes getting really tight focus sometimes a little bit of a bother. Whereas with the PST, you have a much finer adjustment to really make sure that everything is perfectly in focus. And that is a clear example. The Optica should be a little bit sharper than the PST, but there it wasn't because me looking through my camera, looking through the scope, looking at a target, doesn't give me the perfect representation, especially when I have outside elements hindering my ability to notice things. Now, I do notice it when we move up to the steel and I make an adjustment and I get it much better than what it was. So here, I have to say, it's basically a toss up. If we're looking between one and the other, the PST looks like it has a little bit more contrast, whereas the Optica is a little bit brighter. Now, keep in mind, I did film these back to back and there's probably about six minutes difference between the two. So there could have been a little bit more cloud coverage coming in for the PST or perhaps slightly fewer clouds for the Optica, but either which way, the brightness is directly correlating to the amount of contrast that we see. Either which way, they're both phenomenal images, and I would be perfectly happy with either of these. And ultimately, that's what these two scopes really boil down to. I'm here to not tell you which one of these is better, but just the differences between the two. You have to decide which one is better for your A style of shooting, what you prefer as far as your scope settings go, and just what you're getting. Are either of these bad? No. Is one better than the other? In minor retrospects. Perfect example, the view through the PST is much larger than it is on the Optica. There, I just showed you the differences between the illuminations. You could just make it out on the PST, whereas with the Optica, it's very clear to see. And again, you could see just how much brighter it is with the Optica as opposed to the PST. Again, that could just be all down to luck. But nevertheless, the Optica is a brighter optic than the PST. If you're using one for hunting, it depends if you want a, a larger field of view to see what's going on in your environment, or do you want to be a little bit brighter so this way you can pick up more details in thick bush. 
It's all up to what you want. Are either of these scopes perfect? Uh, I don't think so, but I think that they're excellent for what you're paying. You get a lot for your money. Are there cheaper options that will offer the same stuff? Yeah. Will they be as bright, as clear, as sharp? Possibly not. Uh, will they be illuminated? That's neither here nor there. It all depends on what you're looking for. But specifically between these two, I'm actually going to start wrapping this up because this video has gone on long enough and I've talked way more words than I was ever expecting. Uh, by the way, just look at the 320 yard steel. Can you make hits with both? Absolutely. But like I said in the review of the PST, it is the perfect entry level optic to get into a Razer HD Gen 2 with very similar controls and identical reticles. So you could have a you could have this PST on a 22LR trainer. Then you could have the 3 to 18 Razer HD on a 223 trainer, and then the 4.5 to 27 on a 308 or 6.5 Creedmoor. And you have consistency, and consistency is the key to accuracy. You'll have better muscle memory, and you'll be able to use the maximum potential that both the scope and the reticle give you. I brought up the brightness a little bit on the PST in post to give you a little bit better representation of what these two look like, and again, the Optica is just sharper. Now, the same thing could be said real quick with the Optica. You can buy this 3 to 18 by 50 or by 56 and put it on a trainer and then buy their 4.5 to 30, which I think would be absolutely fantastic. They're basically the exact same scope with just different magnification settings, and that's basically it. A 30 versus 34 millimeter tube is the same as the PST versus the Razor. So it all depends on A, what you have, B, what you're looking for, and C, what excites you. A big thing about buying anything is just how much it gives you in that second sort of cool that Fancy always talks about. Does it tickle your fancy? If it doesn't, why bother? If it's not exciting for you, what the hell's the point? Here you have an 8 o'clock p.m. middle of the summer evening. You can easily see the difference here between the brightness settings of the Optica and the PST. Keep in mind, I filmed the PST first Look at how much better the image looks for the Optica. The illumination is not only brighter, but you can count the bricks a little bit easier. The sharpness and clarity to the window is better. Everything is better with the Optica. But again, the field of view looking through the PST is superior hands down. Do you want a bigger image or a sharper image? Between these two, I'm going with a sharper image each and every time. Not to say I'm going to get rid of the PST because I have two Razer HDs that match it as its bigger bigger brothers, but that's what you have to know when you're going into either of these. Which one is better? In which case, hopefully this video has answered those questions for you. And with that, this 23 minute long video is coming to an end. I was going to finish this off on the tabletop, but you know what? I think I'm going to leave this nice and neat with a bow and say this. These are both excellent. You can't go wrong with either of them. They both have their strengths and weaknesses, and you have to decide which is better for you. And with that, thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.